Okay, so we're talking about rotational motion of objects. And so I you know I could have this this Lego thing, I just grabbed that, and it could be rotating. And I could describe it in terms of it being a rigid object, so it has dimensions but it doesn't change shape. Or I could have, you know, just some point masses. And so there should be we should be able to do it either way. I'm gonna show you angular momentum and kinetic energy both in a rigid object form and this form. So let's do the rigid object stuff. This is this is what we have. So for rigid object, we have the angular momentum is defined as I omega, where L is the angular momentum, I is the moment of inertia, and omega is the angular velocity vector. Uh, so I would be equal to uh, the sum over I, little i, m i r i squared. So you take each mass and you multiply it by its distance from the axis of rotation squared and you add it all up. So if you do things that for like a disc, you get one half m r squared, where m is the total mass and r is the one is the radius of the disc. Uh, and the one half comes from the uh, factor of uh, because it's not they're all not all the same after you integrate. If you have i of a a rod, about one end, it's one sixth m l squared, I think, and that could be wrong. But so like if here's your stick, and you rotate it about this end, and that's the length, and that's the m. So that that these you'd have to look up or derive, but that's the angular momentum. And then we have the rotational kinetic energy, and that's one half i omega squared. So again, that same i and the same omega. And then for a particle, we have the um, the angular momentum is defined as r cross p. Uh, so you could write that as just the magnitude is equal to r p sine theta, where theta is the angle between them. And then the kinetic energy is one half m v squared. So I'm going to do I'm going to find the kinetic energy and the angular momentum for this situation. So I have two masses, m1 has mass m1 and it's distance r1 from the origin, the point of rotation, and m2 is a distance r2 from the point of rotation. And so this thing is rotating around with so that it has the same angular velocity. So let's do the uh, angular momentum first. So l equals r1 cross m1 v1 plus r2 cross m2 v2. So these are cross products, but I can find the magnitude of this because in this case, the momentum of these two are gonna be perpendicular to r. So this is going to be the equivalent of l, the magnitude is just gonna be r1 m1 v1 plus r2 m2 v2. I know you're gonna to have to trust me on that one a little bit, okay? And I apologize for that, but that's just the truth. Now, what about v1 and v2? v1 is moving in a circle. So it's moving in a circle of radius r with an angular velocity omega. So this is going to be equal to r1 omega. v2 is r2 omega. They have the same omega. So if I put those in, I get L equals R1 M1 R1 omega plus R2 M2 R2 omega. I can factor some stuff out here. I can factor out uh, omega and I get, well, just one thing, omega times uh, M1 R1 squared plus M2 R2 squared. So this is the moment of inertia. If I take m each mass times its distance from the axis squared and add it up, I get that. So this is the same as i omega. So this is the same thing. What about the kinetic energy? Well, I do the same thing. Kinetic energy is one half m1 v1 squared plus one half m2 v2 squared. So if I use the same definition of velocities, I get one half m1 uh, 
R1 V, oh, I'm sorry, R1 omega squared plus one half M2 R2 omega squared. And so I get, I can factor out the omega squared and I get omega squared, I get one half omega squared M1 R1 squared plus M2 R2 squared. And boom, there you go, one half I omega squared. So the point of this is that these uh, definitions for rigid objects agree with the point mass versions. And then why do we use them? Well, if I have something like a Lego piece or something even like this that I want to rotate around, I don't want to break this up into an infinite number of pieces. I want to deal with it as a continuous object. And then I'm going to have to use these definitions. Okay, so that's what we have, but it should still agree with uh, the, the point particle definitions. Okay.